I want to speak about just three things, but I want to again thank the committee for putting this together. It takes a lot of hard work to organize an event like this, to bring this many people together for an event on a single day is quite an undertaking. So please give the organizing committee another round of applause, please. The senator has said 50 years is a long time, and yes, 50 years is a long time. We have come a long way. Two weeks ago in Addis Ababa, the African leaders were celebrating 50 years of the African Union and 50 years of the AU. Why are we celebrating 50 years? Because 50 years is the time that most of us got independence on the continent. And Kenya is among those countries that got their independence in 1963. And for us, Madaraka Day was the day when the instruments of power and the instruments of government were transferred to us, 1st of June, 1963. So it is a big day, it is a big deal, and thank you all so much for coming out to celebrate this tremendous day. It is a big bonus also that just two days ago, you saw the British government apologizing for the sins of 1952 to 1960. That is very, very significant. There are people who paid dearly for us to be where we are today. And the British government never acknowledged the fact that there were incredible human rights abuses, tortures, rapes, etc., etc until just a few weeks ago. I want to particularly thank Kenyan lawyers. There are, of course, a number of English lawyers who worked on this case, but three particular Kenyan lawyers who stand out who said, we are going to see this thing to the end. One, Paul Mwite, one, Gitobu Imanyara, and one, George Morara. Those were three Kenyan lawyers who have been on this case consistently for the last 10 years. So please applaud them. These are lawyers who were working without having been promised that they were going to be paid a single cent. And the work that they have done over the last 10 years has finally paid dividends. Uh, and you know, I was so happy watching BBC the other day. There is Amze, one of those who, oh, those of you who watched that, uh, the clips, of the celebrations taking place in Kenya. There's a mzee called Gitu Kahengeri. Gitu Kahengeri. I had the pleasure of being at the Bomas Constitutional Conference for one and a half years when we had that Constitutional Conference. And that mzee was there during that conference. And it was just so precious to have someone there who could tell us what happened almost on a day-by-day -day basis between 1950 and 1963 when we got our independence. And I was so happy to see that Mzegitu. It was alive to see the apology of the British government and their operations and the compensation. The money that is being given to them is nothing. The more important thing is the apology by the British government for sins committed to people who are fighting for our independence 50 plus years ago. So again, a big round of applause to our freedom fighters. Many achievements over the last 50 years, I can count them, social, economic, political, many, many, many. The thing that stands out, of course, is our Katiba Mpia, most progressive of constitutions in the world. We have a vision that aims to get us by the year 2030 to become a middle income and a globally competitive country. We are proud of these things. We are clear about where we want to go in the next 10 years, 20 years. We have a fantastic constitution, a framework for our governance because part of the challenge in the first 50 years was the issue of leadership and governance. We had some challenges, not just in Kenya, but in the continent as a whole. 
In Kenya, we are extremely happy that with this new constitution that we have now, and you can see the way things are happening already, post-election. The president appoints cabinet secretaries, wanapitishwa wapi? Wanapitishwa bungeni? The president appoints principal secretaries, wanapitishwa wapi? Wanapitishwa wapi? So that they are reminded that their accountability is to the people of Kenya and not to an individual. The same thing is going to happen with ambassadors. If you're going to be appointed to go and represent the president and the government and the people of Kenya, you will have to go and sit in front of those committees of parliament and explain what exactly you think you will be able to do for Kenya as an envoy. So, and that is the way it should be. I think it is tremendous that we've gotten there. And there are many, many other things. I am particularly proud of the fact that the devolved system of government, we will have challenges. You can mark my words, you can quote me. The next five years are going to be very, very difficult in terms of operationalizing the devolution in the Constitution. And the Senator, I'm sure, can confirm that. We've already started feeling the waves. It will not be easy, but we will get there. We will get there. It will not be easy, but it will be, it, it will, we will get there. Devolution came about because we felt that for too long, the government was too centralized, there was too much power, too much authority, and too many of our national resources based in Nairobi. 60, 70% of the economy of a country of 45 million people was sitting in Nairobi. So this devolution is about getting those resources out, getting government closer to the people so that we have accountability by the people who we elect closer so that people don't have to keep running back and forth to Nairobi to do little things that they need to be able to do in their villages. The president has talked about his commitment to devolution and that makes me very happy. In his statement during his inauguration, President Ruru Kenyatta talked about a number of things that I want to repeat. And he repeated them also during his Madaraka Day speech. He talked about the diaspora, and I don't know if you, those of you who have been listening, I don't know if you've been paying attention to the fact that each and every time that the president has spoken, he has talked about the diaspora. Why? I don't need to tell you why. The incredible potential that exists here, and perhaps because he himself spent some years here in this country as a student, he knows exactly what the value of the diaspora is. But he has also said, he said it in South Africa, he said it in London. But the diaspora will not do the things that they are capable of doing. The diaspora will not be able to realize their potential if they are not organized. If they are not what? If they are not what? We need to make sure that we do not lose this one opportunity for the diaspora to make a difference. Kenya needs you, there's no doubt about it. We all appreciate and acknowledge, and really, in many ways, congratulate some, many of the things that you've been able to achieve here in the diaspora. When I see business people, the team that have been here, Kinyanjui, Karenge, and the team, Kenyans who have come here have established businesses and are running businesses successfully in a country where it is not easy to do business. It is really is tremendous. We need to then pay attention to the question of, and there are two things I want to say that I want to leave you with as challenges as the diaspora. Now you've heard me saying this, you've heard the senator saying this. Ugonjwa yetu kubwa ni ukabila. Munanielewa? Until and unless, and you in the diaspora of all people, kama kweli munajivunia kuwa wa Kenya, we need to see that Kenya really is the common denominator that unites us so that we are not being measured. We are not being measured on the same scale as Kenyans in the village, people who have never traveled out of their villages, who can't think beyond their village, for whom Kenya does not exist, for whom Kenya does not mean anything. You know better that 
after you have traveled 10,000 miles from home, you are 10,000 miles away from home, that Kenya really should mean something to you. And if Kenya really does mean something to you, we are challenging you, you've had the senator say it, let us pull together the things that we can achieve here in this country and the things that we can achieve in Kenya are tremendous. And I keep telling you all the time, if you are the 48th county in the Republic, you would be the most educated county in the Republic of Kenya. You would be the wealthiest county in the Republic of Kenya. And my question to you is, what are you doing with that capability? The wealthiest country, county in the Republic of Kenya, the most educated county, if you are to be county number 48, what are you doing with that capability and that potential? That's a challenge that I throw to you. Those of you who came to the Diaspora Conference a year and a half ago, you heard Professor Ali Mazrui talking about the issue of the Renaissance, that Kenya is on the verge of the takeoff, on the verge of a takeoff. The Renaissance, in terms of reviving Kenya, getting Kenya to move to the next level, can actually be led by the Diaspora. But for that to happen, Professor Ali Mazrui said, you Diasporans, Form yourselves into the diaspora tribe. Munaniskia. Form yourselves into what? Into what? The diaspora tribe. Kuna watu wananiambia mara nyingi nikiwaambia hiyo, oh Balozi, you think we are going to forget about our tribes? Nobody ever suggested that you should forget about your tribe. But I keep telling you and I'll keep telling you until the day I leave here, you're 10,000 miles away. If Kenya really means something for you, to you, then please, please, please step up. Step up, make Kenya the common denominator that we all share, and then ask yourself the simple question. Again, Senator Mtai Kagwe has just put it to us. Do you want to be a part of the solution, or do you want to be a part of the problem? problem ni I would like to suggest to you that you are a part of the solution in Kenya. This year, the budget, the national budget of the Republic of Kenya was 12 billion US dollars. Nini kama diaspora here in America, you remit one billion dollars every year to Kenya. One billion in a country that has a national budget of 12 billion. You tell me that you cannot do things that can so significantly impact that country. Tuko pamoja. So that is my plea to you, that is my challenge to you. I want to highlight three things that the President talked about in his Madaraka Day speech that touched me very dearly. He talked about putting one million acres under irrigation. Munaniskia, one million acres of land under irrigation. My friends, Kenya and Africa have no business importing food. No business importing food. As we sit here today, 30% of the world's arable land, in the whole world, 30% of the land that can still be cultivated is in the continent of Africa. We have no business depending on rain to grow crops. Mvua is ponyesha, Kesho watu wanakufa nja, kesho mifugo zinakufa nja, it is absolutely not acceptable. E mambo irrigation, the Egyptians came up with it a thousand years ago, for goodness sake. We cannot be relying on rain-fed agriculture in the 21st century. And that is why when the president says, let us put one million acres of land under irrigation, now ingine wanasema, ah, uh, is that really possible? It is that kind of a bold policy statement that we need because there is no dignity in importing food. There is no dignity in hunger. And we have no business having anybody in that republic wake up in the morning and not know where their food for the day is going to come from. When you hear the statistic that 50% of Kenyans live below the poverty line, it means one out of every two Kenyans, asubui akiamuka, they are not sure where their food is going to come from for that day. It is unacceptable. 
And that is what the one million acres under irrigation is going to help us to sort out. Tuko pamoja. The other thing that the president has talked about, maternity. Umeisikia hiyo? Kwamba itakuwaje? Maternal and child health, and I can tell you this with a lot of confidence as someone who studied public health. If you cannot make sure that women during pregnancy and during delivery are healthy and that women do not die when they are bringing life into this world, then kwa kweli tunafanya kazi bure. vizuri? And that is why, again, the bold statement by the president that Kwanzia leo, kwenda mbele, let us not put any obstacles in the way of women who are pregnant, in the way, in the way of women who are delivering, in the way of women who have had little children. Let them have access to health care, maternal and child health care. If you want to know the level of development of a country, you look at the health of the mothers and you look at the health of the children. If the children in a country are not healthy, if the mothers in a country are not healthy, the country is not healthy, full stop. So this is a big undertaking. It is a big policy statement on the part of the president and we must applaud him for that. Kisha amezungumzia mambo ya laptop. Mmeisikia hiyo? Ah, the president is jumping the gun. Laptop na hata umeme hatuna kila siku tuna blackout, eh? So mmeisikia hivyo? Senator Mtai Kago will tell you in 2003 when the National Rainbow Coalition took over the government and they introduced the free education program, what will he say, ma? Ah, hii serikali vipi? Where is the money going to come from to educate all our children free of charge? I was a can. So what say, my And those kids are now in secondary school. They are about to finish secondary school. So this idea, I talked about Vision 2030. By the year 2030, we have committed ourselves to become a middle income and a globally competitive country. Tuko pamoja. If we are going to do that, if we are going to become middle income and globally competitive, what the president is putting forward and saying, Kwanzia January, each and every little boy and little girl, apewe nini? Apewe nini? It is not too much to ask. And if we really want to be globally competitive by the year 2030, these kids need to have access to laptops. There is no getting around it at all. So let us again applaud the president for making a bold statement. The resources will come. You make a commitment, you indicate your commitment and you, your intention to address a problem and the resources will follow. And already you've had companies like IBM, Google are already saying we are here, we will work with Kenya to make this particular goal of one laptop per child a reality. Finally, let me just say again, I don't know how many more times I'll have a chance to speak with you. This may very well be the last time that I get a chance to speak to you as a large group of people here in Baltimore. It has been a great honor and a great privilege to serve you as your ambassador, to serve the government, the president of Kenya. Kenya is a country that I am thoroughly, thoroughly proud of. Mimi najivunia kweli kuwa Kenya, and I am happy that everybody who's here today is here kwa sababu na wao nini wanajivunia kuwa wa Kenya. Keep that up. Do not lose track of Kenya. These children who are here, I know they're Americans, but each and every one of them, these guys and girls, we want them to get Kenyan passports as well, so that the next time you're going home with them, wasipange laini na wale wageni wanakuja Kenya. Yeah? The Constitution provides for that. Kids, as long as you can prove to us that one of you, one of the parents, you know, we were such a chauvinistic country, it used to be that it had to be the father. Jinake isponekana, akuna kitu. 
We've become extremely liberal. We've become extremely progressive. So now we are saying, mtoto akiwa amezaliwa na mama au baba ambaye ni mkenya. So all you have to do is to prove to us that you're Kenyan. And it's easy for us to tell who a Kenyan is. And we will immediately start processing a passport for these little boys and little girls. And the reason why I'm saying we want to be able to process passports for them is that we want you to make sure that these children go home as often as possible. Tuko pamoja. A few weeks ago, I had a group of young people who came to my office and cried, and they were very bitter. 19-year-old, 20-year-old, very bitter with their parents. They were born here. They have grown up here. They are American, but this is America. They are reminded all the time that they don't belong here. And so they keep asking their parents, so where do we really belong? What is this thing called Kenya? And why is it that we have not gone to this country of ours called Kenya? There are many reasons why people don't go home. You know them. But these kids, please help them facilitate their appreciation of their Kenya. President Obama is sitting in the White House today because he talked about his roots. And the fact that it was Indonesia, it was Kenya, it was, you know, that is what made him stand out. He identified himself as someone who came from somewhere and from those very, you know, beginnings that nobody would ever ex have expected to rise to become the President of the United States, the most powerful person in the world. So please do not let that opportunity slip. Make sure that these children every day, I'm so happy to see them singing and dancing and performing here and, and uh, what do you call it, modeling. These are the things that if we keep doing these things, find an excuse to do these things every other day. Don't just wait for Madaraka or Jamhuri Day. Mkipata nafasi to bring them together. Look how lively they are. I was saying to somebody that, you know, these kids are this lively because they don't get a chance to come out and sing and jump and run around without somebody telling them, please don't move, sit there, sit quietly. So help them appreciate that this is who we are as a nation, as a people. We celebrate ourselves. We are happy people. We, have, we are proud people. And this is the culture. This is the heritage that you must make sure that you leave these children with. Thank you again. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming out today. God bless all of you. God bless Kenya. God bless our government. And we are going places, I can assure you. This is just the beginning. Kenya is going places, and everybody on the continent knows that. If you want to get an indication of where the continent is headed, look at Kenya. Get your cue from Kenya. When Kenya is doing well, people know that the continent is doing. I thank you all so very much. God bless you. Have a good evening. I think I was told the evening continues. I think the senator is tired. We might have to escort him out, but I will stay and see all the entertainment that has been planned for the evening. So thank you all so much. Yeah?